everybody. All right, Shabbat Shalom, Mishpahar. Okay, so um, to dive right into this, um, the prayer is, I want to pray to enter into this, but it's going to be kind of different. Um, not so much just, uh, you know, bowing our heads and praying, but it's going to be the beginning of this message. And so, if you would, if you got your scriptures handy, I'll give you a second. Turn to Luke chapter 11. Whether your scriptures are on your phone or you got your Bible handy, turn to Luke chapter 11. So the name of this sermon, as you can see, is called, Do You Know Who You're Praying To? The thing that's really been on my heart for um, for this message, and Anthony and I, as we went over stuff about it last night and talked about it, ideally 95% of everything we talk about in Scripture all points to Messiah, right? Everything that we discuss, it's it's about Yeshua, salvation, everything. He's the face of it all. He is. He's the poster child of it. Yeah. Um, but it's but where is it all coming from? And we know about the Father. We know the Father is involved in all this. But just something that really hit me, um, which made 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 me decide that this was the message that needed to be done is how well do we understand the father's position yeah. and even more so how much do we really know who the father is do you know who the father is do you know who it is that you pray to yeah. we we are seeking that personal intimate relationship with Yehovah Yeshua because he's our bridegroom and we are to be his bride but what about the Father? And, and what about that relationship with Him? All right? Um, now, I'm not saying anything that none of us don't already subconsciously or even consciously to an extent know that we're doing as we pray to the Father or we know that everything's from the Father. But Anthony and I, what we're going to share with you today, Mishbaha, is really paint this beautiful picture of who the Father is and what He needs to mean to us, Amen. what He means and meant to Yeshua when He was here in the flesh and what He means to Yeshua, period. But um, who He is. We need to really portray and see the... The portrait, the, 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 man, it's just, there's not a word to really describe what I feel in my heart. It's just to see who all of this is from, Yeah. to see who it's all about. So when, when Paul presented this, this <coughs> sermon idea to me a couple of days ago, and we kind of have been talking not it throughout the week. And uh, especially the last night, it's really helped both Paul and I kind of put things back into perspective. I mean, like he said, we, we know what Scripture says. We know what Yeshua says and his place and the Father's place. But really looking at it and, and, and examining the Scriptures again and again is what we're supposed to do to help us put things back into perspective. And so for us, this week, it's just kind of been like wow like it's like a like a, a gut wrenching eye opening perspective of wow the father in his glory the father in his might the father in his power and his authority and everything that he has his hand upon and how it's all through him and so we pray that this kind of helps you guys do the same thing is to put things back into perspective of who it is that we're praying to who it is that that we're we're calling out to and crying out to and all of his power and his authority amen Amen. So, 
So what we want to do, Ms. Baha, is like I said, we're gonna we're gonna read a prayer because I've seen many on social media they they say that they pray to Yeshua and all that stuff. But what does Yeshua teach us? And yeah. and Yeshua short answer is Yeshua teaches us to pray to the Father yeah. in his name. Mm-hmm. Um, but the key thing is is he says to pray to the Father. Um, so we're gonna read that and then after we read that, then we're going to paint a picture from Scripture of who the Father is and what He looks like, um, what He is described to look like in Scripture, and then this intimate, personal relationship and description of what our Messiah says about the Father Amen. and how He describes the Father and and and. and that true father-son relationship and how personal it is and how much it clearly is something special to our Messiah and and how it needs to be that way for us. Amen? Amen, brother. All right, so as we enter into prayer on this, Luke 11, 1 through 4. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Adon, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Avinu in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And in the Matthew version it says, For yours is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, Mishpaha, I love how this starts out. It makes me, it just makes me weepy. To picture standing there before Messiah, to stand in front of him, and they look at him and they say, Adon, Master, teach us to pray. Can you imagine being right there in front of Mashiach, right there in front of your Messiah, and to be able to ask him to teach you how to pray? And this is the way he tells you. You know, it's so common people want to do a big, long, wordy prayer. Now, I'm not, dis- I'm not talking about those who are lifting up people in prayer, but they just just a lot of wordiness and a lot of the prayer is just the same thing with different words but Yeshua gives us a prayer that is so direct and short it is first it it addresses the father it addresses that his name is hallowed and his kingdom come that his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven to give that it is by him that we have bread that we have food before us daily. Amen. That it is by Him that our sins are forgiven as we forgive the sins of those, that, of those who sin against us. And it's by His strength that we are not led into temptation, but delivered from the evil one. Yeah. And Yeshua is telling us in this Mishpaha, this is all done by the Father. This is from the Father, given to us through the Son, Yeshua Messiah. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the thing we're going to go into next is the description of the Father. And I want Anthony to read this. He he brought this into the message. Daniel 7, 9 through 14. Yeah, amen. All right. Daniel 7. Starting verse 9, we're going to read to verse to verse 14. Uh, 14. Now, 
there's a couple of places that are similar to this throughout scripture uh there's a place uh, in exodus exodus 24 i believe when it talks about the 70 elders being able to see god at the top of the mountain and uh the the jasper uh, throne set in place and then there's ezekiel 1 um where it talks about the the almighty being there in the throne and his uh, throne was like jasper stone and fire was all around and, and just a beautiful description and then also in revelation yeah um so but either 16 or 19 yeah this 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 scripture right here is key uh, i think for this message and and it gives us the picture of of the authority of the father and the place of of his his throne and his reign and his rule and then the the authority that he gives to the son and how you know, we we in this ministry have been been preaching and teaching for the past what two years now, year and a half, two years now that everything is done through the hand of the Son, but it's been given by the authority of the Father, and and I think that this this passage really really encapsulates that. It's it's beautifully described. So Daniel chapter seven. So that last one is Revelation 19, 12, and 13. Thank you. Uh, Revelation chapter 19, verses 12 and, and 13. 13. Uh, 11, 11 through 16 is ideal, but 12 and 13 are the specific ones. Yeah. And to give one thing before Anthony reads that, the description that he's describing in Exodus and in Ezekiel 1 and in Revelation 19. Right, yeah. These, Thank you. I was going to say that. These yeah. are Messiah. Yeah. And Messiah says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So they are a representation of that throne authority and that platform yeah. that is described in Daniel 7, 9 through 14, which is the Father. Yeah. This is the description of the Father. Those other ones are the Son being yeah. that mirror image of the Father. The mirror image, because if you if you pay attention to the way that the thrones are described, they're very similar. The, the stones that are used to describe the fire, even even down to like the hair and the, the garments and everything, it's all, they're very similar. And so that's why Yeshua said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father, because he comes in his likeness. He's the image of the invisible God. He bears the name of his Father. Uh, truly, this is his job to do to the earth. So, Amen. All right. So verse nine, it says, I watched till thrones were put in place and the ancient of days was seated. Just just picture this while, while we read, really try to use your imagination Mishra, and, ha, and, and picture this. Yeah, you got, you got and the, look at the picture behind us. <laughs> look at the picture behind us. Just even if you want, you don't you don't have to. But if you would close your eyes for a minute and, and, and listen to these scripture verses and picture the almighty God, Abba, Father, just in the presence of his being and, and how if it were not for Messiah, we wouldn't even we have we would never have that opportunity to experience that glory in any way because he's so mighty, so powerful, so great. And and just listen to this. OK, so it says I watched till thrones were put in place and the ancient of days was seated like a judge coming through the courtroom and having a seat in the judge seat. His garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame. Its wheels, a burning fire, similar to like it's written about in Ezekiel 1. Yeah. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. He's the almighty judge. He's the ruler of rulers. I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Did you have something to throw in there during that part? Well, that horn is, is well, we know that the horn is the Antichrist. Yeah, Antichrist. Yeah. Go ahead. Antichrist and the beast. So this is all pointing of the, the final judgment. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As for the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I, watch, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, 
one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. And this is the scripture that's referenced in is it Zechariah 14 where it talks about Yehovah will come uh, with the clouds or is that a different scripture that I'm thinking where it literally talks about Yehovah appearing in, in the sky and and coming the, and the Lord will descend. Um, and this is why right? well, first first Thessalonians 4 16 and 17 um, that says that he will descend. Uh, he will come in the clouds. Also, Zechariah 14 says he will come and all his saints with him, right? Right. That's okay. Zechariah 14, 9. Um, let's see. Yeah, and Yehovah shall... No, no, no. I'm sorry. Zechariah 14, 5. Okay. Thus, Yehovah, my El, will come and all his saints with you. Okay. And then the one of descending is... You've got two of them. Okay. First Corinthians... 1552 um, sorry no I was right the first time first Thessalonians thanks for looking that up too yeah first Thessalonians 4 16 and 17 for Yehovah himself will descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of an archangel with the trumpet of Elohim and the dead and Messiah shall rise, and he who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet Yehovah in the air, and thus we shall always be with Yehovah. And then there's one more, is Matthew 24. Um, and it says, uh, verse 30, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds yeah. of heaven yeah. with power and read, great glory. Read, uh, read Mark 14, 62. Because this is key here for us to understand who this is. I mean, this is... We get people you know, saying and, and, and speculating of who these two beings are, but I believe we believe Scripture paints a very clear picture of who this is, and Yeshua says it himself, that who he is in this picture. Yeshua so, says, I am. You will see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And this is when he was standing before Caiaphas uh, during his his uh, hearing. And when Caiaphas heard him say that, he tore his clothes. Because why? Because he knew that Yeshua was referencing Daniel seven. One more. Go ahead. I knew this. Revelation one seven. Behold, he is coming with clouds, yes. and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. Yes. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Amen. Even so, Amen. Amen. So right there, multiple yeah. witnesses, Mishpacha, that this is Yehovah Yeshua. And behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days. So imagine Messiah, Yehovah Yeshua, riding in on the clouds and being placed before the throne of the Father, the Ancient of Days. He's being presented before his Father. He's coming before his Father. He came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and the kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. So we have, we have this picture of Yehovah Yeshua, the, the one like the Son of Man, Messiah, being, being given all authority, all dominion over this kingdom, over the heavens and the earth. He's the firstborn of all creation, the image of the invisible God. Colossians 1, he gets all this authority, but from whom is he given from the it? the Father. From his father. Only the father. From the father, Mishpacha. This, this is the authority that's been given to him <coughs> by the one who had all the authority to begin with. Amen? Amen. Nothing that Yeshua has ever been able to do, nothing that Yeshua has ever done, has been possible. Right. Except that it was all the will of the father. And as we get deeper into what we're going to get, these scriptures that we're going to describe and um, of, of really seeing the Father with the fullness of our eyes right now, Mishpacha, 
seeing what it is that the Father has done, what it is that the Father yeah. planned all along, what it is that the Father's will was for all of this. Not because the Father couldn't come, it was because he couldn't in the sense that in his 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 glory, his omnipotence, his in, in, in infiniteness. Shekinah Is that a word? Bridge. Infiniteness? Shekinah. Yeah. The Shekinah. His Shekinah glory. It is so pure. And we're going to touch on that too. Yeshua actually says this. And I don't want to give it away. I'll wait till I get there. But I mean, it's... The purity, the level of purity of his presence is beyond anything. The earth, because it is, it is defiled, it is unclean, the earth would burn up before him because it could not handle being in his presence. Even, even, in, even in the moment that we see our Messiah being crucified, being being slain for our sins it talks about in galatians 3 that he became a curse for us he took on the sins of the world he became sin in that moment for us and in that moment his father could not he couldn't even look upon him he had to look away because the father cannot even look upon sin not even for a moment because of what we're describing because of this his holiness because of the purity and the the magnitude of his glory and of his presence anything that is is carnal anything that is tainted anything that is taken on a fleshly sinful form even for a moment cannot be in his presence amen and so even in that moment he had to look away from his son amen okay so um where did it go so the first thing we want to get into, um, it's just a back, it's, it's the same thing as what we read when we started out in prayer, Matthew 6. Um, Matthew 6, 6 through 15 has all of it, the Father's Prayer, but Matthew 6, 6, but you, Yeshua gives instruction here, but you, when you pray, go into your room when you shut your door, pray to your Father who is in, in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Amen. Yeshua is directing us. It's another piece of Him telling us how to pray. And, and you know, I, we're all guilty. I'm guilty. We're all guilty that... There needs to be a serious, serious level of reverence when we pray. It shouldn't be something where we're just kind of yeah. like this. Yeah. And, you know, we're all hanging out. And, uh, Father, blah, blah. You know, right. that's that's not how you pray. Because I promise you, Mishpaha, we couldn't even handle be before the presence of the Son in his glory, there's no way we would be standing, laying, or, or sloppily leaning over all without any respect before the Son, let alone the Father, and, and, and to sit there and expect us him to hear our prayer. Yeah. I mean, Mishpaha, this is, my heart in this is that all of us, in hearing this message that it gives us a new level of, of not only being in love with the Father, but a new level of reverence in, in our prayer life it, when we go before Him. Because when we go into prayer, it, it's like when in, in, in the, the example that's set throughout history to go before the King. Okay? Well, we're talking about the one who's above the kings. We're talking about the one who, who raises up and tears down kings Amen. and kingdoms and empires and Amen. dominions and everything else. We're talking about the one who gave Yeshua the, a dominion that will last forever and ever yeah. because the Father says so. That's right. 
And so when we pray, we're seeking the presence. We're seeking to come into his presence. And, and, and it should be that when we're praying, it should be with the utmost respect, utmost reverence. Complete humbleness, Miss Baha. If we could be in the presence of the Father, if we could stand before Him and be in His presence right now, and if He kept us from dying, we would weep. We would weep because every, every minute, every little speck of sin that we've ever had in our life, every wrongful thought, every disrespectful action before him and everything, it would flood us, Mishpaha. It would flood our heart and our, and our minds and we would feel so guilty and so ashamed. It would be that we would. We would seek death. To hope to hide from him. Because of that shame. That we would want to run from his presence because. We would know that we're so unworthy. To be in his presence. But to understand the love of the Father, to understand the greatest example of a father to his children and whom he loves and all that he was willing to do to give us eternity and to give us a time and a place in the future where we would be able to come before Him and worship Him in spirit and in truth. And why the 24 elders and the angels praise Him day and night forever and ever. Matthew 24, 36. This is to give an understanding of the authority that even Messiah here himself says yeah. but of that day and hour no one knows not even the angels of hev heaven but my father only yeah. so think about this for a second the father has given all authority to the son so much so that Yehovah Yeshua came and created the heavens and the earth mm -hmm. Yehovah Yeshua does everything by the authority of the Father and by His will and what the Father has told Him to do. Yeshua says that. Yeah. And we'll get into those shortly. Everything that's ever happened from the beginning, from the moment that Genesis chapter 1 went into effect to the moment that everything is done at the great white throne judgment, Yeshua has been given such immense power and authority that he, has, he is able to declare that I am and there is no other beside me. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 43, 11, I am, I, even I am Yehovah and beside me there is no other Savior. That is our Messiah. Amen. Yet, only one knows of the day and hour of the return of our King. Only one knows of the day and hour, and that is our Father in heaven. Yeah. That's the Father. Amen. The Father who is above <clears throat> everything and above all things. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And it's Messiah's job, it's Yehovah Yeshua. It's it's been given to him to declare the Father to the earth. And this is what we see happening from the from the beginning, from the time of Genesis one one all the way to the time of the return of Messiah. It says in John chapter 1, verse 18, that no one has seen God. The Son has declared Him. Yehovah Yeshua that has, de has, de has declared Him. It's His, it's His job as the mediator, as 
the one who can bring into fellowship a sinful humanity and a righteous and holy and pure God and King Father. It's through it's through Yeshua that we can even have the chance to experience the Father in His presence and His glory. Because without without Messiah, like Paul said, you know, He's been given all the authority to create, to have dominion, to rule and reign. And without that, without Him, we would not have any access to the Father. It's as simple as that. That's right. And I want to go to Hebrews chapter one, and I'm going to read the entire chapter because. It, it gives both, kind of like Daniel 7, it gives a picture of the authority of the Son, but also the one who's given him the authority, also the one who's declared these things to the Son, who has passed down these things to the Son. So Hebrews chapter 1, it's not very long, it says, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. So the Father, through the Son, is the one, he, he made all the worlds, he made all things. The Father, through his Son, through Yehovah, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. It's because he declares the name of his father, the name of Yehovah. He bears the father's name, a more excellent name than the angels. Verse 5, For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will, be a, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he says, Who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But to the son, he says, Your throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, El, your Elohim, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. The Father has anointed the Son with gladness more than all the angels in heaven. More than any being in heaven that has ever existed, the Son has been given all authority. He's been anointed by His Father. To have dominion, to have authority over all the heavens and over all the earth. And you, Yehovah, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth. And the heavens are the work of your hands. They will, they will perish, but you remain. This is the Father speaking to the Son. This is the, this is the Father speaking to Yehovah the Son, Yehovah Yeshua, showing that He has been given all of this authority to create, to have dominion. He was there at the beginning of the laying of the foundations of the heavens and the earth. He's been anointed. He's got position and rule over every being in heaven. They will perish, but you remain. And they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up and they will be changed. But you are the same and your years will not fail. But to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? The father is the one who will make Messiah's enemies a footstool. He is the one who will make all of these things come to pass by his will. It's been his will from the beginning that he will make his enemies, the Messiah's enemies, Yehovah Yeshua's enemies, his footstool, and he places Yehovah Yeshua at his right hand. Amen. Amen. And that rolls perfect into this next one that I wanted to read. Um, so Matthew, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 18 Verses 18 and 19. Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Yeshua's answer right here, I'm telling you folks, yeah. if, if, 
this is we really don't uh, I don't know man father I just wish I had better words we don't understand the level of how amazing our father is we really don't and so much so that even Yeshua goes this far his answer is why do you call me good well no one is good but one that is Elohim wow he's talking about the father yeah I mean that word good uh, it's the, the greater we understand that word the more we should be hesitant not even hesitant the more that we should not ever use that word to describe someone so, oh he's a good man no no he's not yeah because even yeshua disregarded this man calling him good by saying no one is good except one there is a level of understanding of this word that is beyond our comprehension mm -hmm. it, it's above all descriptions it's it gives reference that it's greater than righteousness it's greater than uh, holiness it's greater than purity it's greater than anything that can that is clean this this description this that no one is good but one that is Elohim mm -hmm. and it's How good, what, what is good to, to the Father? What does that mean? And how do we understand that? And the only way, Mishpaha, is by how we seek Him. How we give even greater reverence to Him in our prayer life. And, and you know, do you, do you do a quick prayer? Do you, is your morning prayer time when you're... Sorry to be, you know, a little crude here, but, you know, you get up in the morning and, and is your idea of giving Yah that morning first fruits uh, while you're on the toilet, you know, and you throwing up a quick prayer while, while you're on the toilet and, and by the time you get up the toilet, you're done praying and that's your, that's your prayer time before the Father. Unless something's an emergency or you're praying because you're on the toilet for a bad reason. Imagine being on your toilet before the throne. Yeah, no, it's not acceptable. Yeah. No. Imagine being on your toilet. Imagine whatever. You know, it's like this is not reverence. This is not respect. We go into that prayer closet go hit your knees or or go sit in the chair but go stop everything that you're doing and pray to the father give him the respect and your complete attention amen amen all right, the next one, Luke uh, 22, 42. Yep. Amen. So I'm going to read 41 and 42. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. This, uh, this is where he's in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yep. And he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Amen. And then 43, then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. Wow. wow. So the father, that was the father's answer. No, it's my will that you continue forward. Yeah. But I, but here, I've sent this angel to strengthen you. To minister to you and whatever that means however that was and that's what the father does for us mishpaha Amen. he doesn't give us an out 
he gives us a way through it. That's right. Even when Jonah was whining and complaining about Nineveh being destroyed after he finally went and, and spoke the word of prophecy against Nineveh, and he went and sat waiting for it, Yah gave him a tree to shade him even through all his whining. Because that's how he works. Amen. That's how the Father works for us through his Son that's and right. or directly. And, you, and you well, no, just to, just to go with that, I mean, that just that's all the more proof right there, evidence that this has all been the Father's will from the beginning. I mean, Messiah Himself has has declared, "Not my will, but Your will be done." And there's other scripture verses that we're also going to read here. It talks about Messiah declaring, "I didn't come in my name; I came in the Father's name. I didn't I didn't come in in my plan or in my will. I'm coming to do the will of my Father to be about His business." And so, I mean, we see this all throughout Scripture. Messiah giving us this this declaration of who really has. Um, started from the beginning with all the authority and who's given it to, to the son. So. so this next verse I'm going to read. So don't get mad at me at what I'm about to say. Hear me out. It, it is a common thing to say, I found Jesus. I went here, something happened, da, 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 and I found Jesus or Yeshua, however way people want to put it. But Mishpaha, do you know we don't go to him? It's not, Yeshua doesn't draw us to him. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know what you're reading. Yep. Amen. We don't get drawn by Yeshua. Amen. Yeshua doesn't come to us. We come to him because of what he says right here. The will of the Father. No one can come to me. Are you listening? No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Yep. So none of us have ever been able to turn to Yeshua and, and confess that he is Messiah or confess that our sins or, or seek wow. repentance in his name wow. and believe that he is the king and that he rose from that he died on the cross and rose from the dead, none of us can do any of that unless the Father draws us. Wow. That's incredible. And Scripture even says nobody can confess that Yeshua is the Lord unless led by the Holy Spirit. Wow. Which is from the Father. Yeah. That's powerful. Right so let there. me finish that verse. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. I will raise him up at the last day. Wow. That, that, <laughs> just think about that. Just, just dwell on that for a moment. Meditate on that. Really ponder that because that, that verse, Messiah is declaring that the Father is the one who has the ultimate authority of who gets to come unto him and receive salvation. The Father is the one who gets to count you worthy or unworthy to receive his son wow yes that's just that's that's powerful right there man wow and i even i read the next couple verses and i've, I've got to read this this is even deeper even <clears throat> more powerful so when you read the verses afterwards verse 45 and 46 yeshua is still talking it is written in the prophets and they shall all be taught by El. Yeah. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes from me. Yeah. Because he says, not that anyone has seen the Father, mm -hmm. reiterating what he says in John 1.18, yeah. for no one has seen the Father except he who is from the Father, yeah. from El. He has seen the Father. Amen. Amen. So, Mishpaha, we can't even be, we can't even go to the Son. And how wild is this? Let's look at this. So, I cannot access the Father except, except through, through the Son. Yeah. Because Yeshua says, no one comes unto the Father except through me. 
but yet I cannot go to Yeshua <laughs> for him to advocate for me to the Father unless the Father, unless allows the father draws me yeah. to his Son. That's right. Wow. And so it all goes to the Father no matter what. It yeah. all has to start with the Father first. Amen. Oh my gosh, dude. Amen, it's just brother. so amazing to see this Amen. in this light like this. You want to do the next one? So John, John 14, and just well, kind of going with what you were dude, this, saying right now. Well, go ahead. If you got something, yeah, John, and I'll just John go back four, to that one. John 14, 6 through 14. No one comes to the Father uh, except through the Son, uh, just like we were saying here. So John 14, verses 6 through 14, and it says, Yeshua said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. <laughs> and like we just read, uh, the Father is the one that draws us to the Son. So it's all starting with him and ending with him. If you had known me, you would have known the fa my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him, because he who has seen me has seen the Father, because he abides in, in the Father. Philip said to him, Adon, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Yeshua said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the works of themselves. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will, also, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Who is he asking? He's asking his Father on our behalf. The Father is the one who allows these things to happen. The Father is the one who has the authority, who allows these things to take place, and it's by His works. The, the Son, the Messiah, is declaring right here that the works that He's doing are the works that are from the Father. The plan and the will that is from the Father. But I like, and then I'm sitting here thinking about what we said at the beginning, based off of what Yeshua says here. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Mm -hmm. So the very essence of what is talked about all the way back to Exodus, when Moses says, show me your Shekinah, yeah. well, Yeshua is the uh, uh, physical image of the unseen Father. Yeah. So even Yeshua in his glory, man yeah. could not see him or he would die. And everything that Yeshua has done is a representation of what the Father looks like. That's why in Ezekiel 1, in Exodus, what was 24. it? What? 24. Exodus 24, Revelation 19. These places that we see the Son on the throne and in His, His glorified form is almost an exact mirror image of the Father in, D in Daniel 7, yeah. the Ancient of Days on His throne. And that's what this picture is behind us, is, is supposed to be an example of that. Obviously, this is not it, but to, to take this and get an idea of what that is. And this is what Yeshua was talking about. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. In other words, when you look at me, you are seeing the physical embodiment of the Father because I am in the likeness of the Father. Amen. That's what Yeshua is telling us. Amen. All right, and then, so John 10, 28 through 30, Yeshua says, I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Yeah. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Yeah. I and my Father are a chad. Amen. Amen. And then to go back to John 14, where Anthony was just I at. I read 1 through 4. Is that where you're going with that? John 14? Yeah. 1 through 4? Is that where you're going with that? No, go ahead, and then I'll read the other verse. 
go ahead and read that one if you want. Because huh? I want to read it. I want to read it with Revelation three twelve. So go ahead and read. Okay. It so all right, right, then save it for <clears throat> that. Then yeah. All right. So John fourteen twenty eight. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I am going to the Father. For my Father is greater than I. Wow. It's taught so much in a lot of churches that the Father and the Son are a chad in a single form. Right. But yet there is nothing in the scriptures, especially the Brit Hadashah, that even hints to the father and son being singular form as one but that they are a chad in the hebrew as a unit is what it means that they are a unit and in the and the son right here says because if the father and the son were one and the same then this then he wouldn't be saying that the father is greater than him right it's like be praying with, to the father all these, right all these it's instances. like is this my better half or something yeah, yeah, you know that doesn't case. work it's right. it's no logic whatsoever. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Let's go to John 15, verse 1, 9, and 15. 15, 1. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Amen. The vine dresser. No vine can exist without the fine vine dresser. The vine dresser plants the seed. The vine dresser prunes yeah. the the branches the vine dresser is the one that grows it and and gives it nutrition and it's and good. good soil and everything yeshua is the vine that the vine that the father has raised up Amen. and then through that vine bears the fruit of yep. those who come to know him that are drawn by the father that's right uh verse nine as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Now, that's one I want to expound on here for a second. Think about this for a minute, Anthony. Yeshua is saying, as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Wow. Abide in my love. So in all honesty, he's saying abide in my father's love because the love I have for you, yeah. I am giving to you of the same love that the father has for me. Yeah. There is no greater love that has ever existed, that will ever exist than the father to Yeshua. That is the love above all love. And Yeshua is saying, I give that same love to you from me. Amen. Because it's from the Father. Amen. Because this love comes from Him. Amen. Love could not exist without the Father. That's right. Amen. Verse 15. No longer do I call you servants. I, I love this. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Isn't that he what Yeshua did? Declares the Father. In Exodus the Father. 32. Yep. And he said that he sat with Moshe face to face as one who sits with a friend. Mm -hmm. First time our Messiah is calling us a friend. And what did he do? Because he's the revealing yeah, exactly. everything of the Father he, to him. He declared the commandments, the Torah, the mitzvah. He declared the covenant. Everything that was given the to The heart of the Father. Everything that was given to Moses in Israel at Mount Sinai was declared by the son but it's from the father but it was yes. declared by the son given to the people through the son i mean it's all making it known. perfect order yeah making known what did he say there for all things that i heard from my father mm -hmm. i have made known to you amen. amen all right um can i read matthew 11 please matthew 11 uh, verses 25 through 27 and it says at that time yeshua answered and said i thank you Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that, you're, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and even revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, 
nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come, I'm going to keep reading. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is, again, another key thing here, Mishpachaz, is, is us humbling ourselves and willing to come into covenant in relationship with the Son so that He can reveal to us, He can declare in our lives the love of the Father, so He can declare His Father to us, so He can manifest the name of the Father and the presence of the Father and the glory of the Father in our lives personally in an intimate relationship. The Father desires to be in relationship with us. That's why He created the Son. That's why He made the Son, because He desires to be with man, to dwell with man, even in our even in our imperfection, even in our sinful nature, even though He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. The Father doesn't have to have to be with us or dwell with us. We're sinful. We're broken. Sure. We're fallen. But because He's He desires to, because He wants to, He has His Son, Yehovah Yeshua, declaring the Father to us, and that's the way it's been since the beginning. Amen. Amen. That's exactly right. Which is good to roll into this next one. Um, I like how this is rolling off each other. Okay, so back to John. Yeah. John chapter 16. I, I, I love the book of John it's, when it comes to it's awesome. this. Uh, it's, it's just amazing, yeah. the picture. And, and this, is, this, this is John, the one that Yeshua loved. You know, um, that he had that, you know, John 16, 23 and 25 through 27, verse 23. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you. Amen. Yeshua is always pointing to the father. Yep. Go to the father now I am able to allow you to go to the Father in my name by the authority that he has given to me. Amen. That is exactly what Yeshua is saying. And it is made clear by the fact that we cannot go to the, to the Son unless led by the Father. Amen. And we cannot go to the Father except through the Advocate, which is the Son and the now High Priest. Amen. And all of that rolls together in verse 25 through 27. These things I have spoken to you in figurative language, but the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from Elohim. Amen. Verse 28, I'm going to add that one in there. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Amen. I got, got, got go a couple ahead. of my last two ones here. So um, let's go to Revelation chapter 3, starting in verse 10, and I'm going to read to verse 12. Okay, now this is, in Revelation chapter 3, uh, we have Yeshua speaking to the faithful church. That's called the Church of Philadelphia. And he promises them uh, to give them strength, to, have, to make a place for them if they persevere. You know, so verse 10, it says, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my El, my God. And he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my El, and the name of the city of my El, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my El. And I will write on him my new name. So not only is Yeshua promising to give them 
his new name and write on them his new name, but he's also saying that he's going to make them a pillar in the house of his God, which is his father. He's going to write on them the, the name of his father. And if we go back to John 14, this isn't, any, this isn't a new promise. Yeshua has al always promised this. If we go back to John 14, verses 1 through 4, it says, this will work. okay, here we go. John 14, 1 through 4, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in Elohim, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. So Messiah is preparing a place for us in the house of his father, in the house of his God, in the place of his father. And praise Yah for that, Mishpacha. Amen. Praise Yah for that. Amen. Do you want to read these last ones that you picked out here? Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So while you get to there, I'm going to read this. Okay. So we're getting, coming down to the final scriptures. 1 John 3, 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of Elohim. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah. All right. So Anthony is going to read these few verses in Revelation before I read this final prayer done by the Son. Amen. And it is. It is the greatest prayer ever prayed as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Amen. All right. So Revelation 21 verses 22 through 26 is the first one that I'll read. And it says, but I saw no temple in it for Yehovah Elohim Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it for the glory of Elohim illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. And, uh, 26. and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. And the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor to it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall, not be, no, there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory <coughs> and the honor of nations into it. So <coughs> this picture of the Father and the Son... Elohim and the Lamb reigning together. Two thrones in place here in the New Jerusalem. God and Yehovah Yeshua and the Lamb being given the all dominion, all authority. This is after the Son has subjugated himself and everything in the earth back unto the Father. Like it talks about in, was that Corinthians? Mm -hmm. um, like and, and, and they're reigning together. The, the Godhead, the duality with the Holy Spirit that connects them, that binds them, makes them a chad, the same spirit in both of them. And they are reigning, reigning supreme, so supreme that there's no need for light. There's no need for a sun. There's no need for anything because their glory fills the entire earth. Amen. I can't, I, I, I can't even imagine what that's going to look like. Right? Right? And, and we're going to be able to look at it. Yeah. Because we will have the eyes that can handle that brightness. Wow. To be able to look right at him and just watch it light up the whole universe. Yeah. Amen. Man. Amen. We think the sun is bright. Yeah. The sunshine. Man, we ain't going to need we it anymore. We ain't seen brightness yet. Amen. Next one, uh, Revelation 22, verses 3 through 5. And it says, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for Yehovah Elohim gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen. All right, Mishpaha, in the final part, this is Yeshua's prayer. John chapter 17. Listen, so, please, please listen carefully. May, may you hang on every word that is written in this chapter. Amen. Yeshua spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, 
the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to, to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true El, and Yeshua Messiah, whom you have sent. Amen. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Yeah. I have manifested your name, Yehovah, to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word, your Torah. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I pray for them. Mm -hmm. I do not pray for the world but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and all yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Amen. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you gave me, may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, The world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name. And will declare it. That the love with which you love me may be in them. And I in them.
gives versus like John 3.16 so much more magnitude because you hear people quote verses like that all the time and repeat them and repeat them all the time. It's kind of one of those verses we grow up with. John six, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that who shall ever believe in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. All of this is to help bring that back into perspective, Mishpacha, of exactly what the Father is doing for us. <laughs> wow. And to think... Wow, he's a good father. <laughs> to think that we could ever declare that the son father. came to do away right. with anything right. of the father, right. of Torah, of his commandments, anything. That's blasphemous. Yeshua is showing in this very prayer his love for the father Amen. and the love of the father to him Amen. and to us. So, Mishbaha, I ask you again, do you know who you're praying to? Because I encourage you to really seek him out. Seek the Father with all your heart. And the only way to get to him is through his precious son, Yehovah Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen? Amen. 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 We love you all, Mishbaha. Yehovah loves you more. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, guys.